So the Sony 30mm macro lens. This Sony lens here is a macro lens and is over 10 years old. But is this lens still any good? Is it worth buying in 2022? Well, let's have some fun with it and find out. So why am I showing you this 10 year old lens? Well, largely because it's been in my camera bag now for more than two years, and also I've been using it a lot lately. And for the price, it's a pretty fantastic piece of kit. The Sony E-mount 30mm f-stop 3.5 macro lens, this lead fella here, is a macro lens with a one-to-one -one magnification ability, bringing you super close to your subject which is a lot of fun. And it's an APS-C lens, which means when accompanied with something like a Sony A6000, it stays true to the 30 mil length. But with something like a full frame camera, you do get a strong vignetting around the edges, but this can be resolved when you turn on the APS-C 35 mil compensation in a full frame sensor. But you do get a crap factor when this happens. So the 30 mil lens does become something more like a 45 mil lens. Not a negative and can actually really be beneficial when it comes to the macro world. But this lens starts with a uh, f-stop of uh, 3.5 and goes all the way up to f-stop 22, with this sweet spot being around f-stop 8. Here seems to be the best place for true color, true contrast and sharpness across the whole of the image from the center all the way to the edges. You obviously do lose some of the bulky effects uh, with a higher f-stop. However, you do preserve the quality of the image at its best. This lens is all based on a metal lens mount, but without weather sealing, and it is 138 grams in total. The autofocusing works silently, but it does tend to hunt when it is trying to find its focal point, but it's still not bad though. And this lens doesn't have any lens stabilization built into the lens itself, but to be honest, what can you really expect at such a low price? And perhaps my favorite bit about this lens is the minimum focal distance. It is a macro, so it is expected, but when you take off the lens here, from the very end of the lens to the subject, you have 20 millimeters of uh, minimal focal distance, which means you can get pretty damn close to the subject and you can get some really good close-up shots. Anyway, that's the information about the lens. Now it's time to have some fun with this thing. We're gonna shoot this thing on the Sony A6000 and we're gonna uh, shoot everything all in macro and we're gonna brew some coffee. Roll that B-roll. Cheers. So we've just shot the coffee bureau and I have to say, I'm quite impressed with this little lens here. Forcing myself to use this lens only and macro only for every single shot, it surprised me just how good it was. Now we know that this lens is good with video, but the question is, is this macro lens any good with photography? Well, let's find out. I'm gonna challenge myself by taking a bunch of product photos at the most extreme macro that I can with this thing. So with that, cue the montage and behind the scenes. Let's go. <laughs> This lens, the Sony 30mm macro, is a solid all-rounder. So long as you're not shooting in any dark places, this lens should serve you pretty well, I would say, in the macro world. If, however, you're looking for more of a low f-stop macro lens, I would probably suggest something more along the lines of the Sony 35mm f-stop 1.8 or the Sigma 30mm f-stop 1.4 for the photographers who want that stronger aperture. But if you are a photographer or filmmaker who doesn't specifically need a low f-stop macro lens, then the Sony 30mm uh, f-stop 3.5 macro is a good option for a good price. So that's it for me today, guys. As always, I love your faces. Subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you next time.